Really, Mom? What have I done now? Did you really think you could scare me with a plastic skeleton in the closet? Not really, but I'm running out of ideas. You didn't even flinch at the severed hand in the fridge. You know you're one prank away from me taking the spare key back from you. Also, Halloween is weeks away. Yeah, but you'd be expecting it on Halloween. Mom, it's time to face the facts. I'm not 10 anymore. Don't I know it. It used to be so easy when you and your brother were little. Cut a hole in a box, a dab of ketchup on my finger, and voila, two screaming kids. That's just it, Mom. Halloween is for kids. No, Halloween is for parents to scare their kids. It's the one night of the year where you can terrify your children and no one calls child protection. Us parents need that. Mom, that's a terrible thing to say. I'm joking, <laughs> kinda. But I do miss those Halloweens when you and your brother were little. I guess I'm finding it a little hard to let you go. And unfortunately for me, there's an ocean between you and your other child. So I suffer while Michael gets to enjoy life in Europe with a fridge free from horror props. Them's the breaks, kid. You don't think maybe his crazy mom was a factor in him working abroad? Don't you miss the old days when your dad was still here and we decorated the house together and planned that year's big scare for you two? He had some great stories. Yeah, he did, but he couldn't beat you. I miss him too, especially this time of year. Maybe we need to think of some new traditions for Halloween, though. I get it. No more Halloween pranks. I'll believe that when I see it. What time do you finish work? In about half an hour. Fancy grabbing some ingredients and dropping by my place so we can have dinner together? There's not much food in the house. There's severed hand in the fridge! I already fed that to the skeleton. He needs to gain a few pounds. Hi, sweetheart. Could you come over tonight? I'd like to decorate the house for Halloween. I could use some help. Sorry, Mom. I'm working late. I have a planning meeting about this year's Halloween night at the library. Fine, but if they find me unconscious on the lawn tomorrow at the bottom of my wobbly ladder, clutching a string of light-up eyeballs that I had to put up on my own, it will be on you. I'll take that risk. You will be around for Halloween night, though. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about that. I'll be all Halloweened out by the time work's done. The library has a whole evening of events for kids, so I'll be the one clearing up when they're all gone. So, I'll be alone for Halloween? Just me and a pumpkin spiced cookies? I guess I'll just have to hope your dad will haunt me for the evening. In the spirit of making new Halloween traditions, I thought maybe you could come down and help. You'll love it. There's all the usual hokey Halloween stuff and we read the kids a ghost story. That would be great! Plenty of kids to scare! As long as you keep it child friendly, remember these are other people's kids. But I can tell them about Sheila Shush, right? Who the heck is Sheila Shush? You work at the library and you don't know about Sheila Shush? Should I? Her story must be in the local history section or folklore section, maybe. She was a librarian in the 50s, I think. She was a really stern old school librarian. No one dared return their books late to her and no one made a sound in the library in case she shushed you. Oh no, this is going to be one of your stories, isn't it? She'd had a hard life, the oldest of 12 children, dirt poor, a missing mom, and a drunk and violent dad. Yep, you're on a roll, keep going. She'd learned to value silence. She spent her life listening for the raised voices of her dad, and making sure her siblings all sat silently in the dark of their room, so they wouldn't become the target of his rage. A little cliched, but go on. To Sheila. Silence meant safety, so it's no wonder that she ended up working in the library, and she would not let anyone shatter her cherished silence. If you dared to make even the tiniest noise, even a cough or a sneeze, you would be given a shush, but not a normal shush. Sheila had perfected a shush that felt like it was slashing your eardrums. You only needed shushing once by her, and you never dared speak in the library again. Except, there was this one kid, Norman. You know that one kid who just can't resist pushing the boundaries? The one who enjoys breaking the rules and sending pompous authority figures into a rage. Like the anti-you. Hey, I had a rebellious phase. You mean your three-day goth phase? 
I love you very much, but you didn't really pull it off. It wasn't so much to do with bad choices as it was to do with bad makeup. Jeez, don't hold back, Mom. Can I please finish my story? Norman was the real deal, a rebel without a clue. After his first shush, he made Sheila his target. One dark October afternoon, he stuffed his ears with cotton wool, blew up his best whoopee cushion, and marched on up to the second floor stacks. He popped out from the end of the stacks and leaned over the railing to look down over Sheila at her counter and squeezed that whoopee cushion with impish delight. Impish delight? What's that, a candy for devils? Quit it, you're ruining the atmosphere. Stop with the cutting remarks or I'll shush you. Sheila fired off a shush on instinct, but as she registered the vulgar noise, she spun on her heels and met Norman's eyes with fury. He wasn't smiling anymore. He watched in shock as Sheila darted for the stairs and flew up them, shushing all the way. He quickly jumped back into the stacks and hid behind the furthest bookshelf. He removed the cotton wool from his ears. Listening in silence as Sheila patrolled the stacks, shushing all the way. As she came close, he ran to the end of the row, hid behind the next shelf. Listening carefully the whole time, he managed to stay hidden for 15 minutes. But suddenly there was silence. He thought he heard quick footsteps on the wooden staircase and thought she might be laying in wait at the bottom of the stairs. To be sure, he carefully came out of the stacks and peeped over the railing to the floor below. Sheila wasn't at the foot of the stairs. She was behind him. As he turned, he came eye to eye with her. He backed up against the railing. Sheila, eyes wild with fury, puckered up her thin blood-red lips and gave her most violent shush ever. All the rage and frustration crystallized into one sharp, ear-shattering shush. No one knows what happened next. Some say she pushed him. Some say he was already dead from that terrible shush. Either way, Norman went over the railings. Sheila knew right away that it was over for her. She would never see her precious library again. She simply met Norman's dead eyes, smiled a bitter smile, put her finger to her lips, then threw herself over that railing down onto the polished marble floor of her beloved sanctuary. Wow, Mom, that one's dark even for you. Darling, it's not over yet. This is obviously a ghost story. They say her spirit still walks the stacks searching for Norman, ready to rush to any noise. And you best be quiet up there. My mom told me that a couple of kids had died there. Just found on the floor a trickle of blood coming out of their ear. The official story is they had a brain hemorrhage, but how did two kids have one at the same time? Everyone knows they died from a deadly shush from Sheila. Yeah, don't tell that story to the kids, please. Did I scare you? I did, didn't I? Okay, Mom, you have officially given me the heebie-jeebies. Just a little, but yes, you win. You have Halloween scared me. Yay! I gotta go. See you on Halloween. Can't wait. And bring those pumpkin cookies. The kids will love them. That reminds me of a story. Mom, stop! Hey mom, just checking you are ready for tomorrow. I was thinking you could meet me at the library around 5 to help me set up. Yes, I'll be there. Great. Uh, by the way, I had a look at the library archive. There was a Sheila Sanderson who worked at the library in the 50s. Her paycheck stopped suddenly in October in 1954. And there is a newspaper report about the mysterious deaths of a brother and sister in the library on Halloween. But I can't find any stories about Norman or Sheila. I can't believe I didn't know about it. Really? Uh, that's interesting. Oh, I thought I'd at least get a told you so. Sorry, I told you so. Hey, sweetheart, I'm at the library. I can't see you. Oh, hey, mom, come upstairs. I'm in the reading room next to the stacks. Filling party bags. I could use a hand. Now she wants a hand. I put a lovely fresh one in your fridge and all you did was whine. Very funny. I'm on my way. 
This is going to be such a fun evening. This has been such a great night. I'm just getting the decorations from the front steps in. Could you be a dear and get my coat and purse from upstairs? Sure, Mom. I'm just locking up. I'll meet you outside. Well done, Mom. You got me. Yay! I did it! The skeletal librarian didn't really work, but turning the lights off just after I saw her did. I'm not that thrilled about you shutting down the power, though. This is an old building. Mom! You can come out! Mom, come out! I am out! Mom, please tell me that's you in the stacks. You win. I'm really freaked out. Great costume, by the way. Darling, I'm outside! Really? I think there's someone in here. I'm sure I just saw a woman at the end of the stacks. I'm calling the police. I'm coming in. You need to hide. Let me know where you are. I'm behind the reading desk at the far end. Mom, I can hear someone walking. Don't come in, Mom. No one is messing with my daughter. Mom, did you hear that? Someone shushed. Shushing Sheila shushed. I need you to stay very calm and very quiet. I'm hiding in the closet at the top of the stairs. I peeped out and I swear I saw a woman in old-fashioned clothes. She went into the stacks, but I can't have seen her. I made her up. But mom, I saw the records. There really was a librarian called Sheila in the 50s. And those teenagers did die. Maybe it's a story I was told and I forgot. Or maybe your story became real. Halloween is the time for things like that to happen. But it's not like I'm a witch. I can just spin a good tale. Whatever is out there, I think it's best avoided. Make sure your phone is muted and dim. Already done. And we need to get out quietly. Do you think you can get to the stairs? Or should we wait for the police? Have you ever seen a horror film where the police show up and sort it out? Anyway, it's Halloween. I bet they get a lot of calls. Could be a while. I can't make it to the stairs yet. I think she's coming my way. Mom, the shushing is getting louder. Did you hear that? I threw a book and hid behind the shelf. Mom, she's coming your way. Hide. Quickly. I'm going to make a run for the stairs. Are you there? I didn't make it. I banged into the railing and it made a noise. She came running at me. Mom, it is her. She's so pale and her lips are so red and her eyes are so black. I had to hide under a reading bench. Mom, she's so close. She's going to find me. I threw another book, but I don't hear her coming. Is she near you? Are you there? She's standing right in front of me. I can see her feet. She, sweetheart. She, Sheila. 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 Sh Sheila. Sh -sh Sheila. Honey? Yes. What was that? Are you okay? Michael. Your son Michael. Not the Halloween one. We wanted to give you the best Halloween prank and a surprise visit all in one. If you come out from behind the desk, you'll see that old lady. Is your son in a dress? You know me, Mom. Never could resist a bit of drag. Huh? Is that really you? Think for a moment, Mom. Is the ghost of a woman you completely made up real? Or do you have a son and daughter who know that Halloween is your favorite time of year and wanted to give you the best scare ever? Where are you, by the way? I thought you were behind the desk. Darling, I don't know if I want to hug or strangle you both. I'm in the ladies' bathroom. I know it never works out well in the movies when someone hides in there, but you two didn't leave me much choice. I was gonna pee my pants. I'll be out in a moment. Don't you dare turn out those lights. Mom, it's your daughter again. I just gotta know right now. I got you, right? Oh, you did. I'm coming out now. Please be outside the door. I don't want to walk anywhere in this place alone. I guess some mothers might be mad, but now my heart has stopped racing. I'm kind of proud that my son and daughter love their mother enough to scare her to death on Halloween. You two are the best kids ever. Shush. <laughs> You're making me blush. Very funny. Hey, sweetheart. Just letting you know I made it home, okay? Thank you for a wonderful night. 
Glad you enjoyed it. Can you remember to grab my librarian's skeleton when you get to the library tomorrow? Yeah, it's here. I picked it up with all the other Halloween stuff. Are you sure? Positive. I'm sure I saw it peeping out from the second floor window of the library as we were leaving. No, it's here. Then who... Uh, you know what, never mind. I've had enough of shushing Sheila for one year. Since our night of terror, Mom hasn't pulled any more Halloween pranks on me or Michael. But she has been helping with nearly every kids event at the library. It's given her a new lease of life. The Halloween event is her favorite, though. She dresses up as Sheila Shush and tells a much tamer version of her story. The kids love running around the stacks while she chases them. She even made it onto the local news with her story, and despite it all being made up, people do stop her in the street and tell her that she told the tale wrong and add a new bit to the legend. And several people have said they've seen her on the second floor. I think Mom really did make a ghost real. Happy Halloween, everyone, and remember, if you hear a shush when you're next to the library, be ready to run. Sheila is overdue a victim.